Hi, I'm Kelly Forshaw Smith, Head Medical Trainer for the Finishing Touches Group and Director and Technician of MediCos London. I've recently written a blog, and if, like me, you prefer to watch something rather than read, I thought I'd do a video to accompany it. So the topic that I have chose is pigments and inks. It's been an ongoing debate of which is better, which is safer, and so on. So I thought I'd just highlight a few of my personal views. I've seen on social media a lot of people slating semi-permanent. Uh, but I actually prefer semi-permanent myself. I've been doing treatments for over 15 years. And if semi-permanent wasn't any good, I don't think I'd be in business. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I like semi-permanent. And then you can make your own decision up. So first of all, I just want to highlight that as long as you're using safe semi-permanent or inks, long-lasting inks, as long as they're safe, it's your own personal preference of what you want to use. But this is my reasons of what I think. So I personally like that it's easy to obtain all of the MSDS sheets. And what that is, is a material safety data sheet that each pigment, so the manufacturers have a list of these that on each pigment, which is all of the ingredients and all of the substances that are inside. So you can ask your manufacturer and they can provide them should you need them. Um, but what you're looking for is you're wanting to make sure that uh, the products that you use are not on the ResApp list. A ResApp list is a list that's put together by the government which states what substances are banned in each country. Now, each country has different regulations and a different ResApp list. So you must make sure that you're abiding by your country's rules. I happen to know that there's some big brands out there, and in the past, maybe now, that they have some of the ingredients that are used, for example, say they're allowed in America, but they're not allowed in the UK. So you need to check. The reason this is so important is if for any reason you ran into any difficulty, your insurance would be invalid. And obviously we, we don't need that hassle. Um, so do your research and do it yourself. Don't rely just on the trainer telling you that they're fine. Maybe they don't know themselves. So do your research and have a little look, knowing that you're using the best. The other thing I like about semi-permanent is I like my patients coming back. Now everyone says, oh, they fade and they fade. Well, so do permanent inks too, maybe not to the extreme, but when they fade, for example, in the areola, they fade with a slight pinky hue over time. Very roughly, I get anything from a year to six years for my patients. That's after they've had their second perfecting visit, but that's a pretty long time. And I think that's a kind of a good length of time for if you want to adjust something. As you get older, our skin tone changes. We get cooler in skin tone. So this enables me to add more if I chose or change the tone if I chose. Maybe you want to lift something, maybe you want to make something look lower, depending on the circumstances. Maybe they've just had some extra surgery um, or maybe they've had a treatment where it's lifted. So it enables you to change, which is what I like. You're not stuck with something and not able to move or make it age appropriate. I also think personally that I think inks have definitely got their place. There's no question about it. But I do think that they're better used for maybe trained professionals, people who've been in the industry for a little while and know what they're using and how they're going to use it. Why not start with semi-permanent and then once you get confident, move into the permanent once you've had more experience. Well, that's my views. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to hear from anybody. I'm sure people have got a lot of things that they'd like to say and I'd like to hear them. So thank you very much.